Imagine that you've just been diagnosed with an illness. And imagine that having that illness means you're 50 times more likely to end up dead than the healthy person sitting next to you. Well, that's what it's like to be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Now, borderline personality disorder is an extremely debilitating psychiatric disorder with the main symptom of severe emotional dysregulation. Up to 75% of people with this diagnosis self-harm and about 10% will successfully commit suicide in their lifetime. Now, borderline personality disorder is as common as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. But while I'm sure everyone here has heard of these disorders and probably knows something about them, the same cannot be said for borderline personality disorder. So why is that? Well, unfortunately, it's because borderline personality disorder is still viewed by many people as a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that they don't believe there's any real biological reason why people, why people are suffering from their symptoms. Maybe they're exaggerating or just pretending, maybe they're being manipulative, maybe they're just not very nice people. But often they're sent away with little or no tangible help and support. Well, I don't believe that that should be the case, and that's where my research comes in. So we recruited a group of people with a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder, as well as a group of healthy controls for comparison. Everyone completed a number of clinical and behavioural tests and questionnaires, and each participant was also given an MRI scan. So what we found was that people with a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder were less well able to complete the tests than controls of social and emotional regulation but also that their performance correlated directly with incidents of childhood abuse. So people who had experienced more abuse in childhood, childhood were less able to complete the tests in adulthood. Similarly with our MRI results, we noted distinctly different patterns of brain activation between the two groups in response to the same emotional stimuli. And once again, activation correlated significantly with childhood abuse. Now, these sorts of results and correlations have never before been found in this population, and I think that they're extremely important in helping to validate the disorder, not just for sufferers, but for medical professionals who may previously have been sceptical or dismissive of the diagnosis. So hopefully this research can lay the groundwork for even more research into borderline personality disorder, so that in the future, every single person who presents with this diagnosis gets the help and the support that they need. I would not need to feel like we don't have to.